everyone, and welcome to Youth Uncut, a show that gives youth a voice and an opportunity to discuss the things that mean most to them. My name is Coach Devin Buchanan, and I'm the founder and executive director of the Focus Youth Network. The Focus Youth Network is a nonprofit organization that provides innovative, educational, and recreational activities for youth and their families centered around three main pillars, wellness and nutrition education, character development, and post-secondary success. I'm super excited today uh, because our, our theme over the last season has been uh, organiz organizations that are serving our youth. We had Breakthrough University with Kristen Lewis. Uh, we had Tech Core 2 with Joel Wilson. Uh, and I'm so excited to introduce uh, today, uh, Milaj Robinson of Youth Creating New Beginnings. Uh, Milaj, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for, for joining me today, man. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just really excited to uh, to talk to a young brother like you who is is just making um, an impact on his community through just passions that, you know, you've developed. So, uh, you know, I'm really excited to have you on. So welcome. Yeah, I thank you. And I appreciate you for giving me this opportunity and this platform to voice my opinion and just have a, a, a great dialogue uh, with each other. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to make sure that everybody can see you make sure you stay in the center of that camera because we, you know, we got everybody is going to have an opportunity to uh, really hear the powerful words from a from a young man that I think, you know, we've had opportunities to speak. Uh, and so, you know, I want to get right into it. So uh, the first thing I want you to do is, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you go to school? Tell us a, a little bit about your interests. You know, mm -hmm. like that. who is Milaj Robinson? Right. That's a great question. Um, <laughs> my name is Malad Robinson. Um, I'm from the Logan section of Philadelphia. I attend uh, Philadelphia Electrical and Technology Charter High School. And right now I'm currently a freshman uh, at Morehouse College, majoring in political science. Um, a fun fact about me is I love self-educating myself. Um, it just, it just, obtaining information and then, and then, uh, delivering it to other people and especially the youth, it just went in my passion. So that's just a little bit about myself. That's awesome, man. I, I love that. And I love that you led with that as obtaining information, but not keeping it to yourself and giving it to other people. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's awesome. And, and that leads us right into um, just knowing a little bit more about your organization, YCMB, um, Youth <laughs> New Beginnings. So tell us about that name. Um, what, like, how did you come up with that? How did you guys come up with that? And, mm -hmm. and your so, um, so the founder, which is Sierra Brown, um, she came up with the name um, because her initials is CNB. And uh, that her name is Sierra. Uh, her middle name is uh, starts with an N. Her last name is Brown. Mm -hmm. um, but she wanted to add a little twist to it, and she put a Y in front of the C and B. And um, you create a new beginnings is basically um, self-explanatory. We just want the youth to create a new beginning for their for their lives, uh, for our community, and uh, and just so we can um, demonstrate a better um, beginning for the next youth um, that's coming. Um, in the future exactly exactly but um yeah. but to i'm sorry but to get more into uh our mission is um our mission is to basically target the youth in the urban communities uh to just stay away from negativity um bring positive light to their lives and and to just to tra chase chase their dreams um that's one of the big things about uh our organization we want them to find their passion and bring it to light I love that. I love that. And, you know, when I when I found you guys and I came across your organization, I think just over a year, probably maybe almost two years now, with this pandemic, it's like things mm -hmm. just flown by. But I think almost maybe two years ago, um, I came across your organization. You guys were doing, uh, you know, some community service outreach and different things. And so when we think about this idea of new beginnings, um, you know, I, I love this idea of helping youth realize that where they are right now isn't where they're going to end up, right? And so you can always start over uh, and create a new beginning. And, and I love that. Um, and so when you when you think about new beginnings, right? Like, what do you feel are some of the struggles that our, our kids, you know, even 
you having just graduated high school and now being in college, when you think back to your educational experience, what do you think are some of the struggles that, you know, some of our teens are struggling with, maybe specifically in Philadelphia? That's a great question. Um, I think that um, the youth struggles uh, with just not having anything to do within our community. Um, because um, as you see, like, it's not a lot of, uh, especially during this pandemic, it's not a lot of activities. It's not a, a lot of like places that you can go uh, where you can just enjoy yourself and have a good time. Um, and another thing is that we don't, we never had the formula of uh, obtaining wealth, right? So um, when you look at these young guys that, that grew up in the urban communities and stuff like that, um, nine times out of 10, they never had the right guidance about how to get money, right? Or how to make money. Um, and and it's just, it, it was just a domino effect. It's, it's just a domino effect. And I feel as though um, we struggle with that a lot. Um, we struggle, we try to impress others and not actually try to impress our, ourselves and not actually go within and find a true power within ourselves. So um, as, as a youth, we, we just still trying to figure out life. You get what I'm yeah. trying to say? And that's just not in the urban community. That's, that's a, a whole nationwide thing. Um, so um, that's what I think that we is really struggling with within uh our communities and, and, and just worldwide. Yeah, yeah. One thing that I heard you say is, uh, well, you said a couple of things and, and very well spoken. Um, you know, this one idea of not having constructive activities or things to engage in. And then I think the other thing you did talk about is like the access or knowledge about how to build wealth or, or how to um, use the system to work in your favor. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I think as we are looking at two organizations together, I think that, you know, we do have one, the, the power and the platform to educate. So I think first educate young people on how to earn money, not just make money, right, but earn it with your own skills. Uh, and then what do you do? that money because it's just a resource, right? So what do you do with mm -hmm. that? So I love that you're talking about uh, giving kids the skills and the knowledge and the wherewithal to move forward in their lives. And, and I think that that first thing is education. And one thing kind of in our, our pre-conversation that we had before we came on is you said that, you know, at times uh, schools can be behind uh, with their curriculum because of possibly maybe the kids or the, the students that are there. Can you speak to that a little bit? Like, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so um, I tend to see a lot of students not actually even try. Um, and I don't, know, I don't know why it can be because of their household. It can be because um, just the mind thing. But if, if I seen everybody just within my grade, try to actually put forth that effort into um their schoolwork and and with the and, and just paying attention and, and not letting their phones distract them then i feel as though we can excel over the oppression we can excel over all the uh things that systematically set us um behind you get what i'm trying to say so yeah. i just i that's what one thing i really influence our youth to do is to just give it a try. You get what I'm trying to say? Just, yeah. just put all your effort into um, to school. That's the first thing we need to do, put our effort into school because after school, then we're going to have to actually face real life problems. You get what I'm trying yeah. to say? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and there's so many things that, and we, we couldn't even touch on it all in, in 30 minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I see a lot of the struggles with kids is like, you have to think about the why kids don't try. And the one thing that I always say to people is how you think is how you feel and how you feel is how you act, you know, and you think of self-concept, self-esteem, self-efficacy, like how you view yourself, how you feel about yourself. And then what can you do with that feeling? And I think a lot of kids, when you think about viewing themselves, like how do kids in Philadelphia view themselves? Like, mm -hmm. 
you hear Philadelphia is like kind of like this grimy blue collar city and like, you know, kids a lot of times don't even view themselves as this capable individual that can go out and have a massive impact. So if you're not thinking that way, then how do you make a connection with the things you're doing in school or the people you're meeting on a daily basis? See, like we have this relationship because I think that you have substance. You have kind of this idea that really like to move forward, it's built on relationships. And I think a lot of kids are, are missing that. Um, I, I want you to, I, I would love for you to kind of talk about um, if you could solve a problem, right? If you had to pick something to solve, um, you know, what would you want to do right now, like as a, as a actionable step to try to make impact in our city, just on your own, with your own experiences, like, what do you feel like is, yeah, I, I think I could do this to make an impact. What, what do you think that could be? That's a great question. And uh, it's a lot of things that I would like to take uh, within um, our city. But one main thing I want um, to do to make an impact is just to educate my people. Like what I was saying before, just yeah. educate. Because um, I, wasn't, I wasn't educating myself three years prior and, and actually knowing like the the, the deeper roots of what's going on within our community, such as uh, oppression, such as uh, uh, poverty and stuff like that. The, the real reason why we are in poverty and, and our yeah. African American history and stuff like that. So, yeah. so for, for a lot of us are programmed to believe certain things that's not actually true. Yeah. So if, so that's why when I say I like to educate myself and I put, I, I emphasize self-educate because the some of the things that they were teaching us in school wasn't wasn't true you know what i'm trying to say or if if it wasn't true they didn't teach us what we should know you get what i'm trying to say so i feel as though i would just i would just influence and persuade all my uh brothers and sisters with and and in the community to just educate themselves if 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 it's just reading a book it's, it's it's simple as reading a book right and uh when I tell like pe- my peers to read books and and to watch different podcasts and stuff like that, they automatically think it's boring because yeah. like it's, it's reading books. We in, in school we was reading Shakespeare. In school we was reading The Great Gatsby and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But when you read informative books about things that you actually want to like know about, such as like financial literacy, such mm-hmm. as uh, African American history you would start to understand you will have that double consciousness of what the real reality is. So uh, that's why I just think that um, I would, I would just recommend everybody to educate themselves. And if, if, if more people start to educate themselves, I think that the homicide rate will go down. I think that the crime rate will go down because uh, to be honest, we was taught to, to hate hate each other or not to trust each other or to be divided and mm-hmm. you can see that the results right now within 2021 and 2020 it, it the the results to show like the proof is in a pudding yeah yeah no you're you're right man and i think it's become heightened even more now with the pandemic where kids are feeling less and less opportunities to feel success right they're not getting the opportunity to come to school and and practice you know using their their character their personality you know there's kids who are outgoing and they're not getting the opportunity to do that there's kids who are athletic and not getting the opportunity to do that and so it's like how do we give young people this opportunity to feel success right Mm -hmm. And, and then build off of that and and that's why you know i'm excited for not just this conversation but building this relationship with you because i think we're going to be able to get the message across, right? Like bombarding kids with the message of self-education. Like don't let school be the only place where you're obtaining information. You know, Elon Musk, uh, you know, Elon Musk, creator of uh, Tesla. Mm -hmm. He talks about, he's like, 
you know, college isn't really necessary for everybody. College is good. I would never say college isn't, you shouldn't go to college. I right, think, right. you know, it, it's, it's definitely beneficial. But with the internet and YouTube University, there's there's no reason you can't get the, the information that you need. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's like teaching kids how to shortcut and use school plus the internet equals a lifetime of wealth. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think that's kind of where we're at. And so, you know, I would love for us to begin to brainstorm, like, how can we really impact, um, you know, young people with this information? So here's the question that I have for you. Um, the transition from high school to college, mm-hmm. how would you describe that as a, as a student who came from the school district of Philadelphia, now going to Morehouse, mm-hmm. uh, how would you describe your transition to college? Um, dang, that, that was an amazing question. And, and I had to actually put a lot of thinking into that because we got to consider COVID-19 as in a major factor that happened within my transformation from high school to college. Right. Yeah. So, um, so for me, when I was in high school, um, I had all my friends are uh, pretty older than me. They all was in high school. So I used to go visit their campus. I used to go to college parties and stuff like that. So uh, me in the midst of the moment, I always had that uh, that thought, like, I can't wait to go to college. Like, mm-hmm. the, I can't wait to have my own college, have my own dorm, and have my own experience, right? So um, when I was my senior year in high school, when I was getting accepted into all these uh, colleges and the, my dream colleges, the colleges that I didn't even think that I was going to get accepted to, which is Morehouse College, um, it, it, it made me even more amped up to go to college, right? Yeah. And this was, this was before the pandemic. This was right before the pandemic. And um, as soon as the pandemic broke, uh, broke out, um, I was just like, is it going to affect me going to college? Mm-hmm. But I, w- I wasn't trying to have that uh, that mindset because I didn't want to feel that type of burden. Um, but as time progresses and I, I seen that it was like the slope was going down, that was going up like uh, of the, the increasement of cases. Uh-huh. So uh, I was pretty worried about that. Right. But um, as soon as um, they told us that we wasn't going on campus, it's just it shut my body down a little a little bit more. You get what I'm trying okay. to say? It just it it, it it took a toll on me a lot. Yeah. I can say that. Um. So, so for me being a person that likes to learn uh in person, um, it it really affected me a lot. Um, because um I didn't know how to reach um different like uh resources and stuff like that within my within my school. Yeah. Um, I didn't know, just like, I didn't have a lot of people, um, like a lot of people that I know, um, that were my friends that was in college. Um, this was new to them too. Online yeah. virtual class and stuff like that. That was new too. So I couldn't even go uh, to them and ask for advice about how I should move and how I should, uh, manage my time. That was one of the things. Time management was yeah. something that I suffered and uh, my first semester um, because uh, it felt like school was a choice because I was just in, I was in a house. Um, it, it, it felt like I wasn't in a learning atmosphere. Right. Yeah. So, so it was pretty, it was a, it was a, it was a challenge and I didn't do uh, as I expected um, as well as I expected to do, yeah. but um, I just took that as a learning experience. And now uh, for this semester, I uh I learned how to manage my time. I learned how to uh uh strategically do the things that I have to do uh as far as schoolwork. So it yeah. was it was a pretty it was a it was a rough it was a rough rough ob- obstacle, but I managed to fight through it. Man, I I can only imagine what it's like to be at home 
and have to go to school, have to log on to class, have to do things. I mean, school felt like an option for me when I was on campus. Like I was there, I had to go to class. And I still didn't go when I first started. So I can imagine what that's like. Um, and then, you know, the growth that that needs to take place in order to feel like you can truly be successful at the next level. And, you know, when we talk about equipping kids, educating them, I think it's, it's letting kids know, like, I say this all the time, your current situation is in your final destination. And so knowing like, all right, I, I, I know that I need to get here. I know that I'm trying to get to college. I know that there are certain things that I want to do, but no one around me is able to really tell me the best way to do that. Where can I get that information? Oh, Milaj has been through that. Oh, Milaj has a mentor. He has people that are in his corner that are helping him, you know, let's tap in, let's, let's be that resource. Let's uh, check out those resources. So I think that, you know, these things that you're learning right now um, and being able to internalize are going to help you help other people um, a little bit later. And I think that's amazing, man. Um, we're coming down on like the last couple minutes of, uh, of our, our interview here. And so really what I want to do is, is kind of talk about youth creating new beginnings and your plan for the future. Uh, tell us about some of the things that you've done with the organization in the past, some of the events that you've done, uh, what the impact was, the purpose of it, things like that. Okay. So, um, our first, our very first event was in August of 2019. Um, at that time, I wasn't the CEO. I was just a volunteer of You Create New Beginnings. And, but um, we, was, it, we had a book bag drive um, mm -hmm. before school. And we were just giving out book bags, pencils, pens, uh, books. Um, we had refreshing, refreshing uh, things such as like juices and and um, refreshments, as I should say, I apologize. Yeah. And um, and and that event was a success. But after that, in January of 2020, we had a uh, a youth talk heavy event, which was a panel where um a lot of uh, known faces such as Fully Motivations, Minister Zay, uh, the 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 CEO of Nomo, um, mm -hmm. Ricky. Uh, they were all on the panel and they were talking about the things that we that we face in the community, such as uh, police brutality, black and black crime, um, how we should unify more and, and different things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a it was a great event because we had actually uh, people that was in the political field come to our event and listen to our issues from the people. Um, yeah. And 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 I. They, they definitely heard what we had to say. We was in newspapers. We was in articles. Uh, we was on different websites and stuff like that. So our voice was heard. Um, yeah. That After that, we had a Black History Month uh, event at University of Harrisburg, um, Sci Science and Technology. And uh, it, was a, it was a sip and sketch. And we just uh, did a presentation. We, uh, we told them about Youth Creating New Beginnings. Um, we told them about the Black history and the things that we face in in uh, Philadelphia, because a lot of people that was there, uh, they weren't they weren't from Philadelphia. So we mm -hmm. just tell them that the black issue or uh, the the obstacles and the trials and tribulation that we face um, in Philadelphia. Um, that after that, we was about to have a, an a fashion show with all black entrepreneurs mm -hmm. uh, um, broadcasting their brand or their uh, their clothing brand, right? So um, due to COVID nineteen. We had to cancel that because um, the 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 cases were were rising substantially, and um, and since then we we never we didn't have an event because me and the uh, co-founder uh, Sierra Brown we are in college and like I said earlier we was facing a lot of uh, trials uh, within just college um, just yeah. trying to fill everything out and just try to uh, make that the new norm. So yeah. uh, it was it was hard to try to manage our business slash our organization and school, but um, now um, we're definitely um, starting to fill everything out. Um, Sierra Brown, she is on campus at Virginia State University, 
and okay. she's uh and she's having uh, a lot of different uh events on her campus such as um movie nights such as um um game nights such as uh a lot of different other things right and um me being in Philadelphia still I'm I'm planning on having a uh, a second annual of uh YCMB Talk Heavy event and oh, uh we're just going to do the same thing and we more going to focus on the solution instead of talking about the problem this year. So uh, um, that's one thing that we have coming up before the summer. And um, another thing we also want to do is just finish uh, the thought and that vision that we have with the fashion show. Uh, yeah. We want to, we want to make sure that actually come, uh, uh, we actually execute that plan and, uh, and make sure, um, make sure that our, African American entrepreneurs showcase their brand through YC and Big. I love that, man. I love it. I love it. I mean, the 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 past has been amazing for YC and B. You guys have made um, you know, a lot of impact in just a short amount of time. And it really seems like you guys are go-getters, right? It seems like, you know, you plan these events, you go do it, and you know, you don't let anything get in your way. And I and I love that about you guys. So I'm definitely looking forward to partnering with you to to working on you know making impact in this community and our young people. So I really I really appreciate you coming on today, uh, Milaj. I appreciate you sharing uh, your passions uh, for our youth. Um, in ten quick seconds, ten seconds. Do you have any advice for our young people before we leave? You got fifteen seconds. Self educate. Self educate. Self educate. Education. Um, financial literacy, um, put the guns down, pick up the books, put down the guns. That's, that's my advice. That's my, I advice. love it. Well, I appreciate you, Milaj. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for checking into another episode of Youth Uncut. This is the Focus Youth Network and we'll talk to you next time. Mm-hmm.